Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky with your favorite real estate website, niche niche land site, www.thelandgeek.com. That's right, bookmark it. And today's guest is no longer a guest because he's now, I'm going to call him a regular. How about a fixture? A fixture. Almost like, you know how when you get, uh, you break your arm and you put on the cast and then they take the cast off, and you feel like, you know, yeah, the cast was kind of a pain, but now you miss it. That's how I feel about when I don't podcast with Duran. Duran Frazier from LandHub.com and ReserveLand.com, living the dream in Carlsbad. How are you, my brother? Mark, I'm just excited that I got to see you recently. I know. That was great. Yeah. Uh, I was excited to be in... 72 degree weather what was that what was that coffee place we went to lofty coffee lofty coffee i'm i'm still jonesing for it that place was unbelievable i'm not i'm not exaggerating i got in at what seven something in the morning yeah seven o'clock yeah Dre and i had, had a important meeting it went all it went all day it went all night and we sat for like the first what four hours at lofty coffee yeah doing strategy and I'm telling you, that place never, never was slow. It was unbelievable to watch. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. It's a coffee shop that I've enjoyed uh, frequenting for the last, I would say, year, year, year and a half. But and most people know that I love going there. It's my, it's my office away from my office. But uh, some of this, it's or, it's organic coffee. So most of people go like, who cares about organic coffee? I drink Folgers for breakfast. Um, right. If you drink Folgers, just read the ingredients, please. Um. <laughs> ooh, ooh. That that is scary stuff, isn't it? Yeah, you, it is. you can you can have so much like cockroach in your coffee grounds before the exactly. FDA says it's not okay. The FDA says everything's okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, but no, it's a great great coffee shop. So yeah, Mark and I got to spend uh, a good day together. Mark even Mark got to experience what it's like to buy a new dishwasher with me. I did. That was very fun. Yeah, that was a half hour uh, actual nightmare. I knew exactly what dishwasher I wanted. And it took the guy about thirty minutes to figure out how to sell it to me. That's so. right. That's right. <laughs> but you, but you got a really top of the line one. That was really nice. That was nice. Um, so, anyways, um, you know, Mark, Mark, and I uh, were discussing before uh, before the podcast started. What do we talk about today? And I think we came up with an, a, a grand solution. So, Mark, do you want to introduce the topic today? What do you want to talk about today? I don't know. Let's, maybe you had mentioned deeds. You want to talk about deeds? You I mean, know what? You know what I mentioned deeds is I was on the Facebook page, and oh no, it was uh, the podcast was it the podcast page. It was on one of our pages. Someone said, "Yeah, I like the information. Just wish you guys would talk about more specific information." So I thought, okay, let's talk about something really, really specific, different types of deeds. Because this person that emailed in wanted to know about the different types of deeds. I'm pretty sure we talked about this, but. We can talk about it, and it, it's in my three fatal land buying mistakes ebook. So yeah, I think this guy might be a little lazy, Mark. Um, I don't know what his name is, um, yeah. but or maybe he just doesn't want to spend uh, nine ninety seven and join the program. It's possible. Which is uh, you know free information is great. Mark and I can only give so much before we have to start charging. <laughs> so uh, what are you talking this, about? We can just give and give and give. That's true. That's true. We're like land Santa Clauses. Land, this land, land Mother Teresa's. Perfect. I like it. Changing the so, world one land investor at a time. One parcel at a time. One parcel at a time. You know, you know what's funny about that though is if we didn't charge for the information, no one would do it and no one would appreciate it. It's true. Are you, you are so marketable. It's insane. I mean, the minute you get in front of a camera, it's like everybody's just like giving you money. What are you talking about? I wish. <laughs> Your coffee talk. I mean, it's crazy. Oh, yeah. Coffee talk. Sure. I mean, gosh, you put that up there and you get a million views in a morning. I know. I Yeah, exactly. <laughs> people people just love the sound of my voice. 
That's crazy. You know, it's, yeah. it, it is true, though. You do sound really good. And I sound like I'm always, um, uh, what's the word? Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm, I've got too much going on. Maybe I sound preoccupied half the time. <laughs> well, I'm always hazing you. You're not focused. You need to be, you more, you need to, you need to be more focused. I am focused. I am focused on everything 24-7. Does that make sense? Whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. So let's just, let's just do a quick rundown of, the, of different types of deeds. So your least, should we go from worst to best or best to worst? What do you think? Uh, you know, you know, why don't we start with, you know, what would be interesting, Mark, is to kind of walk through the process of when we first started the business, we probably talked about it before, but when we first got in the business, how, how valuable just a simple quick claim deed was. Well, and, in, and, what, in what sense? Well, it, it, because, I mean, when I say valuable, meaning like it, it gets the job done very quickly, right? Like, wait, like wait, wait, on which side of it? Is, if you're buying or if you're selling? If you're selling. Yeah, if you're selling, it's great, but not if you're buying. No, I, I agree. I agree. But we're not really talking about buyers at this point. We're talking about selling. Well, it was kind of confusing, actually. Oh, that's, I, well, why I, that's why I'm asking you. Got it. Okay. Dre so, hasn't uh, eaten lunch yet, so I've got to kind of help him out here. Totally, guys. I, I have very low blood sugar right now. Uh, I'm drinking a glass of lemon water for my lunch. That's right. So why don't you go through the process, Mark, and, and why don't you start talking about deeds, and then uh, I'll just shut my mouth. How does that sound? No, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> no pressure there. Why, why do I do a Why do I do a lecture on deeds for this podcast? Perfect. Okay, you start. Go. All right. I by the way, I I just I do miss you, and I do Thanks. miss I, I do miss Carl's bad. Okay, so should we should we, you want to do worst? Okay, let's just talk about the worst one, which is the quick claim deed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Go. Okay, so a quit claim deed basically warrants the buyer nothing. So typically, among related parties, they'll do a quit claim deed. But if you're not related and your seller wants to give you a quit claim deed, that is an indication that something could be wrong in the chain of title with that property. Duran, would you agree? Or that the seller is just simply lazy and has no clue what he's doing. It's that's possible too. Or they have a bad attorney telling them, "Oh, you should you don't want to warrant anything," and give them a quick claim deed. Well, you know, which, I which that is because possible because you know your attorney wants you not to take any risk. I, I mean, I think you can drive down to your local Walmart and pick up a quick claim deed for like three dollars. So um, that's you right. Know, yeah, your staples in, in the form section. So that's why I say, I mean, it's a simple way to, to transfer land. It's definitely not the safest uh, legal way to transfer land, but it, but it, for people that don't get it, you know, quick claim is uh, the most informal way to transfer a property, I would say. And again, right. let me just reiterate, we are not attorneys. Um, we are not, we are, we are not CPAs. We are, we are just giving information that we think, we think uh, is right. Correct, Mark? Yeah. We're not giving legal advice here. Yes. For sure. So. And these are things that we've done over the years. Uh, and you're going to hear stuff that you guys are, you know, we generally will have people go, hey, are you sure about this? Um, most of the things that we discussed, we've researched, we know quite well, we've dealt with, we've, we've paid the attorney fee, so you guys don't have to. But uh, there are some instances where we're not 100% certain we are, um, that, you know, ab about every aspect of the deed. And we're always learning too. So it's, it's, uh, it's and, and every state is different as well. Right, exactly. So, Basically, a quick claim deed is an instrument of conveyance of real property that passes any title, claim, or interest that the grantor has in the premises but does not make any representations as to the validity of such title. And that, my friends, is from the free legal dictionary online. So basically, yeah, here's your property and you're taking all the risk is essentially what it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's the worst type of deed if you are a buyer. It's the best type if you're the seller because mm -hmm. you're not taking any liability at all with what you're selling. Yeah. But we don't really teach that. Now, the second type of deed is a special warranty deed, right? A special warranty deed gives your buyer a little bit more assurances, but not much more because it only applies to the time that... You've owned the property. 
So I've owned the property for a year. I give Duran a special warranty deed. And basically I'm warranting that during the time of my ownership, I haven't placed any liens or encumbrances on that title. But the entire chain of title, I'm not going to warrant at all. At all. So that's all on Duran. He's taking the risk for that, except for the time that it's been in my ownership. When I first got started, I used special warranty deeds because that's, yeah. you know, we were buying tax defaulted property and we didn't want to take the risk. And that's what our attorney told us to do. Um, I know a lot of sellers that still use special warranty deeds and it's, it's kind of the best of both worlds. You're giving your buyer the assurance that you haven't done anything on the property in the title, but you're also kind of protecting yourself by saying, Hey, I'm not going to warrant the entire chain of title. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You still use special warranty deeds or are you? Use no, the... I, I, I stay, I stay with the, the uh, grant sale bargain deeds. Great. Okay. That, and that's kind of like a Nevada warranty deed. Yep. Right. Okay. Uh, so grant, grant bargain, bargain sale. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm low blood sugar. I said, it, I said it incorrectly. Grant bargain sale. Yeah, I said grant sale bargain. Grant sale bargain. That's okay. So, yes. All right. And then the grand pooba of all the deeds is the warranty deed, which if you're the buyer, you really want because it's, you're basically the sellers holding his feet to the fire and saying, Hey, during the entire chain of title, there are no deeds or no, no deeds. I haven't eaten. There's no liens or encumbrances on this title. And yep. you're, you're kind of opening yourself up to some risk if you don't know about the entire chain of title. So now on larger transactions, of course, you're going to go through a title company. But some, sometimes there's smaller transactions and I'll do a warranty deed and, you know, it, it could come back. But yep. in, since I've been doing this since 2001 and thousands and thousands of transactions, I haven't had any, any issues. What about you? I have not had a single issue. Uh, you and I have purchased, we've talked about this on another podcast, we purchased property in various parts of the country that we had to quiet title for the next owner to be able to warranty the property to someone else. If that right, right. And, and you know, it's less expensive than uh, quiet title now is using taxtitleservices.com. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I had the owner on the podcast. It's These guys do the research. It's quicker. It's less expensive than doing quiet title. It's great. You know, I was just thinking, you know, you have these people. You've obviously, you know, I thought I was a fixture on your show, and now you're telling me you had other people on your podcast. Okay, so they're guests. They're that guests. makes me really angry. You're not um, a guest anymore. You're a fixture. You know what? You know what I was going to say is that we should actually collaborate as a group. You know, like you, me, and Ted Turner, or you, me, and you know, uh, Steve Wynn. Is that his name? Um, sure. So. So uh, just having these guys on, on the podcast would be great so that we could get, you know, some, a, little bit of, a little bit more of a uh, collaborative tone to our podcast. I think, personally, I think we're really boring to people, but maybe I'm wrong. So I, I don't, I mean, I think it'd be, it'd be great to have uh, an occasional mastermind podcast and just so people could see what we do on our masterminds yeah. and go through some of those issues. Yeah, no, I um, agree. That'd be kind of fun. But then again, you get it a free month anyways, if you sign up for it. So you can listen to them anyways. Yeah. But, uh, I, I do agree. We, I think we should start charging people for our nonsense. What do you think? We could. I don't know what the market's like for nonsense right now. I heard it's really good. In fact, I think <laughs> is it strong? We're paying a pretty penny for nonsense right now. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, just, <laughs> I just did a Facebook promotion on nonsense. I see, yeah, to, build, will, to build my list. Try. If anybody can do a Facebook advertising post, it's me. I'll see if I can get people to pay for nonsense. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, yeah. <laughs> so last time we talked, you were doing Facebook stuff. What's going on with that? I'm, I, I've been uh, doing quite well. Just working on uh, conversion campaigns and, or, you know, on, on just the conversion aspect of the campaign. And, uh, you know, just, just different. It's, it's just so interesting when you're trying to target a specific demographic uh, and how you do it. And, and, uh, you know, one of the things that our listeners uh, would be intrigued by is just really understanding. One thing that we all need to learn is is how to build a, like a funnel. Like Mark has built this really great funnel system. Everybody, so that you know from the, from the very top to the bottom who your buyer is or who your person is. So 
Um, so I've just been really trying to focus on, you know, what converts best and who are, who's my target market for a specific property. And so it's just really interesting going through the process and learning how to do that. And then, and then at the top of your funnel, looking at it going, okay, from, from this Facebook lead, where do I send them from there? Where do they go? Um, and it's just, it's just interesting. I wish there was like a, Mark has a, system, a great system in place and, and sort of teaches you through his program too of how to do it, which is neat and, and, and something that you can utilize outside of land in any business model is just building funnel systems and, and knowing what to do with it. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, you, you know, in, it's constant tweaking of that funnel too, by the way. You don't yeah. just build a funnel and then say, okay, it's, it's done because marketing always has to be tweaked it needs to be tested you have to do split testing and just see what converts better but from from the ten thousand feet view of it basically you're looking at a funnel right so you want to get as many people and as many qualified people as you can into your funnel so i don't believe in getting people who like ipads into my funnel right yeah. because yeah. everyone wants a, an ipad or if you're a Microsoft person, a Surface, right? So those people I don't want in my funnel because you'll see, you know, on Facebook promotions for a free iPad. Just opt in here with your name and email address, and then we're going to start emailing you information. So in our business, I'd rather it be land related. So the promotion might be, you know, get this free white paper on how to buy and sell raw land, or you know, get a two hundred fifty dollar coupon on a piece of property get access to our you know our best properties that haven't been listed yet that kind of thing and though then you're building in your funnel targeted qualified people that you know are interested in land and then from there you start sending them valuable information building rapport right and then you ask them for their business but not before then Yep. And, yeah. And you know, it's funny if you think about too, like how Facebook works and operates and, and just in, in general, um, how we, how we view things. I mean, if you, if, if you're trying to get somebody to opt in for something, you sort of have to give them something in return, right? right. You don't have yeah, that ethical bribe. Yeah. And, and you know, when you see your buddy goes, Hey, I, you know, I mean, how many of us have friends that like every five minutes, either they're on Twitter telling you they just went to the bathroom or um or made a turkey sandwich you're like bro well, nobody cares about your turkey sandwich <laughs> and i certainly don't care if you go to the bathroom and 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 people you know in their own minds they're you know they they're they're trying to create you know their their i guess their own brand on facebook but there's a certain there's certain things that attract people and certain people certain things that turn us off and right. like mark said that the, the one thing that does turn everybody on is an ethical bribe right right so what's so, our ethical bribe for land hub what, what are you doing with your land hub funnel um, so right now, uh, I'm, I'm in some, uh, some heavy discussions, uh, as we sort of proceed into our, our next big element of land hub, which is basically bring, we're bringing in a very robust component. Um, it is going to be, um, it's, it's, and Mark and I have kind of looked at it. It's, it's really neat. So for, for those listeners who are listening, basically what, what I'm bringing in is a component that is a, uh, customer relationship manager with an email marketing component. You can build websites on it. Um, you can you can track basically your funnel system through your email marketing campaign. You can you know you have various different groups. You can you can communicate. One of the really neat things, and Mark and I haven't talked about it, but um, they, they're one of the really neat, uh, unique components is we can actually take um, certain people uh, in certain programs that Mark's working on and put them all together, so they can all kind of co communicate and actually talk like a Facebook group within within uh, Landhub. So, like, like an internet, right? Correct. Correct. That's cool. So, um, so we're building this. Um, I think I'll have it finished today. Is July seventh? I think, or uh, no? Yeah. What is what? What is today? Um, Today's the seventh. Okay, so we'll have that out by probably the end of July, beginning of August. Okay. Um, and once once that's released, we'll be at a point where we'll we'll have a a very huge value add for anybody that joins, um, and we're going to have some discount rates to those. Um, customers that, that are part of Mark's program. And uh, so it's just interesting just, you know, kind of as, as you build that. But my ethical bribe is giving giving uh, land sellers that, that extra software component to not only track the sales process, 
uh, but also, you know, value adds in terms of syndicating the property. Yeah, I, I love that idea because now it's a it's a it's a one stop shop. Yeah, for all my land selling needs. Now, what about buying? Can I can I use it for that, or is that a different? Correct. Issue? So, so we're gonna you know it, it's the the natural progression of where the, where land help will go is it will actually get to a point where a lot of traffic is coming on the site due to you know a number of land sellers due to the marketing that we're going to be doing uh, and and we'll we'll probably have a lot of buyers on there looking for property so both I think on the both sides we, we've already got a lot of organic traffic that are with of sellers that are listing property and and some that I've seen some of the price that have come on the site pretty aggressive some people looking just to dump property so there are going to be deals in there that you just got to like any like any other land website you got to find the deals right right exactly but um it's 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 going to save so much time and energy. It's uh it's it's going to be great. I'm I'm really excited about it. Yeah, me too. Especially the uh, just just the fact that I can live in one spot and do all my my marketing. Because right yep. now I'm I'm all over the place for my marketing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, and, I'm, you know, I'm not solving. I mean, I'm not solving a huge problem, right? In the sense that that. Uh, it's, it's some of the stuff is is not already out there. What I'm doing is I'm bringing it all in one central hub, so you have the ability to do it. I mean, could you could you go find a way to, uh, you know, could you go get an email marketing com, uh, platform? Sure, yeah, you can go to Mailchimp.com. That's fine. We've talked about it. Right. But but to be able to take that email right from uh you know right from your uh, listing where somebody emails you and and circulate it right back into a, an email marketing component um from one hub. I mean. It, and it, it, the, the platform is very robust. In fact, there's a learning curve that we're going to go through a little bit. We're going to have video, you know, video explainers to get to get through it. But um, but there's there's a there's a lot to offer. So once you sort of learn and understand it, um, you know, it, you're, it, it's going to be very powerful for a land seller. Why don't we do a training webinar and just we do and just do like a screencast and show people exactly how this works and uh, and yep. why why you want this as opposed to what I'm doing, which is all piecemeal, you know, I've, yeah. got, I've got AWeber for the email marketing automation, and I'll use the optimized press theme or lead pages for my landing pages, and you know, putting ads out on all the different websites. So I could really just have everything living in one spot, right? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm 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 excited. You know, it, again, it's it's been a been a work in uh, progress, but uh, I think we're f close to a point where I've got something really viable for our customers beyond just search. And I think that's value in itself. Right. Having a component where you can you know you can find or where you can list your property and people can find it. So having that extra added component, and you know, we're still talking pricing. I've got you know the software is not going to be super cheap. I mean, my, my goal is to keep everything, including all your listings. At under a hundred dollars a month, um, right? With the software, which which is very competitive because if I want to land, list on land and farm, it's fifty bucks, and I, that's all I get is listings. Yeah, and, and land watch I think is a hundred bucks now a month. Is land so, watch a hundred bucks now? Yeah, unlimited listings, a hundred bucks. So, so we we may eventually, depending on you know how robust this platform gets, because obviously there's a lot of costs involved. But right. uh, but yeah, so it's uh, it's going to be a pretty enjoyable process. Um, as we as we launch and kind of see where things are at, but uh, I'm excited, and I know that Mark's going to be excited, and just to have you know just to have all these pieces in, in one place and a place for all of the Land Geek customers to use. So, yeah, yeah, I'm 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 going to send out uh, a little mailing here for a coupon code for everybody to get started, and um, it's it, it could be a game changer if you get that API working. With Craigslist, that's a game changer, don't you think? It is, and that's and you know I, I'm I'm sad to report that we had uh, you know we were we were two steps forward, one step back for several months, and then we just had a kind of an interesting uh, setback last week, and so we're just trying to solve it. But again, that's the nature of the development business and trying to get things done. Right. Um, and it is what it is. We we just keep pushing forward, but w which is why I'm excited to introduce something that, that we have. We now have something really viable, and Craigslist will just add on top of that. So. Right, right. So from an entrepreneurial aspect, what do you think has been the biggest challenge as far as this startup for you and LandHub? Um, I would say the, I would say the fundraising component's the challenge. I'm not a 
I've always in every business that I've ever done, either either uh, you know done private financing in in, in a real estate business. Um, Mark and I took you know took down some large chunks of land with uh, private financing, but uh, raising capital is a challenge in this in this climate, and that's I think from a from a standpoint of taking you know a real estate, which is sort of off an offline component, and technology and sort of merging them together. It's right. a challenge because not everybody understands what you're trying to accomplish, and I do, and I understand it very well. But not everyone thinks the same way I do, so it's been a challenge. I haven't presented my 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 investor pitch to many people. Um, the ones that I have were sold, um, but it's like any other business. You got to close, and closing takes attorneys. Closing takes there's just so much involved, and right. I get to like I get to like second base or third base, and I'm just like I'm exhausted, and then. You know, there's a reason why, you know, your lead investor pulls out or this. So, you know, I, I and in, in my mind, I'm like, I, I, I prepared for those challenges because I, you know, I had, I had the money to get me through to hopefully push this thing cash flow positive without having to go raise capital. But if I had capital to come in and help me build it, I would, I would, I would do that. So I'm, I, it's just, you know, being an entrepreneur is very challenging. And, uh, but that, I would say the fundraising process was definitely the hardest part of it. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot now. It's okay. that time. So, Duran, what is your tip of the week? Well, as most people know, we've talked about Facebook the last couple of podcasts. Right. A website called Page Moto, M O D O. Um, P A G E M O D O. D's and David O. Dot com. Okay, pagemoto.com. I'm there right now. Make a custom Facebook business page for free. Easy apps to grow your Facebook page, turn visitors into leads, and leads into customers. So oh, this is a it. really cool website. Looks, uh, it's a newer technology, but again, we're you know we're focused on where where are our customers, and generally speaking, unfortunately, ninety percent of the of the population is on Facebook. 80% of the time. Right, right. So, yeah, this is great. And it, it has a nice little photo editor to create in your your visual posts. No design skills required. So I, I hired a company that was part of Infusionsoft to help me with my Facebook campaign. Mm -hmm. Let's just say I paid a little bit more than free. I'm, I'm embarrassed to say what I paid now that I see PageMoto. So... Okay. Um, and really what I was going to do was just hire some like a designer on Fiverr because mm -hmm. you know those for 5 bucks they'll they'll design a nice post. This is better because you can just do it yourself. Yep. And, exactly. they, and they take all the the work out of it. I love this. Yeah, it's a software and now I think they're I mean obviously there's they they, they charge money somewhere so we have to figure out where they they charge money but where, yeah, uh, where are they making their money? Uh here we go. Their plans their plans if you go to their plan button 625 a month. Thirteen twenty five a month, or for agencies, it's thirty three bucks a month. That's ridiculously cheap. So yeah, I'm I'm paying fifteen bucks a month for Grow Social, which I'm not going to uh, promote now because this is so much better. Wow! So this is secrets, great, folks. Folks, this this whole podcast is all about secrets, and you get them all in the eleventh hour. That's right. That's right. That that's why you have to stay to the end. To uh, to get this kind of stuff, this is really great. Drain, you, you you've been on fire lately with your tips of the week. I don't know how you're finding this stuff, but you we're you, building we're building a special special software so that you cannot fast forward any of our any of our podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm not going to put them in the show notes anymore either. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to see the tip of the week, you have to listen to the podcast all the way to the end, and then you have to post it on Facebook. That you liked it, and you have to share it. I've so got you idea, to share Mark. like the podcast. Just to let's get the play, let's play. Let's play a little game from here on out. It's going to be called um, um, "Where's Waldo?" But we'll do it as "Where's the tip?" So, like, you have to put like, we're not going to tell you guys. We're going to start doing tips a week in the middle of our podcast, so that, <laughs> so that you don't even know where it's going to be, and we're not going to put the information on the on the bottom. Um, so you're going to have to just figure it out. And if you find it, you can let us know that you found it. You actually listen to our podcast. And then we'll, you'll enter to win a um, three-day, uh, two-night um, sleepover at Mark's place. Yeah, that would be fun. Exactly. We, we should get two or three people who want to do that. 
<laughs> for sure. All right. So my tip of the week, that's a great tip, by the way, Thank is you. a book, a book, 18 minutes, find your focus, master distraction, and get the right things done. And uh, everybody knows I have such a hard time with attention and focusing, and it's always been a daily struggle. And I'm always trying to tweak my day and figure out, okay, how am I going to plan my day for today to get the wigs done, the wildly important goals for that day or that week or that month. So I'm really not just working in the business and feeling busy, but actually being really productive on the things that are going to help grow the business. So check it out. I think the author's name is Bregman. 18 minutes, find your focus, master distraction, and get the right things done. If you want more tips, tricks, techniques on how to make passive income, active income, more money, buying and selling raw land, the best asset on earth, go to www.thelandgeek.com. Download the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And listen to uh, Duran and I argue on a weekly basis and get the podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. And look, give Duran some love. Check out landhub.com. Go to reserveland.com. Invest in some wholesale land. If he doesn't have any wholesale land, check out frontierpropertiesusa.com. And uh, Duran, are we good? Anything else? on your mind? I think we're good, Mark. Thanks for your time, my friend. Thank you. Hey, I really appreciate it. And uh, I, I assume you're just going to go surf now. Actually, the surf is really good. I will definitely be surfing today. Yeah. See, if you if you buy and sell enough land, you can go surf. Put it this day. way. If you buy and say, if we're going we're gonna to offer, eventually going to offer a program where we teach land and surfing on the same weekend. I know. This is Duran's dream, by the way is uh, to have these programs. And I'm just like, I don't know. So if you're interested in, in land coaching and surfing combined, send us an email. In the meantime, show us some love. Leave us a uh, comment on iTunes. Uh, look, hook us up on Facebook. And, uh, you know, like Mark the Land, or is it Mark the Land Geek? Mm -hmm. Or the Land Geek page. Like it. Share it. Give us some love. Whatever you want to do. Anyways, thanks for listening, everybody. We really do appreciate it. And uh, we'll see everybody next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.